Hello and welcome back to Rock Records Reviewed. My name's Adam and this week we're going to look at the very best of Eric Clapton. Um, Eric Clapton, of course, is a bona fide guitar legend. He started his career in the mid 60s with um, the Yardbirds and then he moved on to John Miles Blues Breakers, then he moved on to Cream, uh, then he was in Blind Faith, Delaney and Bonnie, Derek and the Dominoes, then he started a long solo career and uh, he's also collaborated on albums with people as diverse as Wynton Marsalis, Steve Winwood, B.B. King and J.J. Kale. Now because Eric has such a vast, sprawling, diverse back catalogue, um, we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to look at, I think, the best of Eric Clapton's music. We're going to look at his top 10 albums and we're going to include live albums, collaborations and uh, basically anything that he's played on that we think is pretty fantastic. So um, we're going to crack straight into it and at number 10 I'm going to put Journeyman. Journeyman from 1989. This was something of a rebirth for Eric Clapton. The 80s had been a dodgy and difficult time for a lot of the rock stars from the 60s and 70s. They were really kind of trying to find their place sonically in the landscape at the time. Um, but towards the 80s there were signs that some of them were finding their feet again. Bob Dylan did Oh Mercy, Neil Young did Freedom uh, and Clapton did Journeyman and this compared to the rest of his 80s output this was a very sort of solid record. It was um, produced with confidence. Um, the sound was deep and strong on the record and there were some really big songs. There was Bad Love um, which is a sort of a Layla type vibe that I think was quite sort of contrived but it's a good number. Um, there's also Old Love, which is now something of a Clapton standard. Um, it's a robust record and his singing is very, very good. Listen to his cover of Ray Charles' Hard Times. He sounds fantastic. So it, it really does sound like a rebirth. He, it, he's found his feet again, musically, sonically, vocally. And really this was the beginning of his renaissance, which carried on and only just sort of gathered pace uh, into the early 90s and beyond. Um, at number nine, Blind Faith from 1969. Um, this was post Cream and Clapton um, was fed up with all this superstar nonsense. He wanted to just be in a band. So he wanted to put together uh, a group with Steve Winwood, um, who was a very precocious and impressive young musician at the time. He'd been playing in traffic. Um, uh, and they got in Rick Gretsch on bass. Uh, and the idea was just to rehearse some ideas and kind of just put it out there and see what happens. But of course, Ginger Baker rolls up at rehearsals and says, I'm going to be your drummer. Ginger Baker had been in Cream and had been one of the reasons for all the sort of dissatisfaction in that group. So I think Clapton um, uh, drew a heavy sigh at that point and just cracked on with it all. Um, the album is really actually quite good. It was underrated at the time, but there is some very, very good stuff on there. There's Presence of the Lord, Can't Find My Way Home, and the fabulous Had to Cry Today. Um, there's something, some unfulfilled promise with Blind Faith. Um, and, and, and I think they could have gone on to great things. They ended up doing a big free show in Hyde Park. And then the whole thing sort of imploded with all the personalities involved. But the record is very well worth investigating. At number eight from 1977, Slow Hand. This was one of Clapton's more solid and consistent solo records. Clapton, as we know, had struggled with heroin addiction and alcoholism um, throughout much of his career. And as a result, a lot of his output is quite inconsistent, but Slow Hand is definitely one of the better solo records. Um, it was his fifth solo album, and it's full of really big hitters like um, uh, Wonderful Tonight and Cocaine and Lay Down Sally, which Incidentally enough, he co-wrote with Marcy Levy, who went on to uh, form Shakespeare's sister with uh, Mar uh, Siobhan Fahey from Bananarama. So if ever there was a strange rock link there, Bananarama to Eric Clapton, you have one. Um, there's also some really good deep cuts, The Core, um, Peaches. Uh, it's, he's, he's playing with a really good um, band here. He's got George Terry on guitar, Carl Radel on bass, Jamie Oldeker on drums, Chris Stainton on piano. These are people he went back to a lot throughout his career, and they always... Um, uh, delivered very reliably for him, but it's a good record. Check it out. Um, at number seven, um, one of the little undiscovered gems, uh, I'm going to put Live from Madison Square Garden. Uh, this came out in 2009 and he went on tour with Steve Winwood. And I think to go full circle and finish some of that business we were talking about a minute ago that was unfinished in Blind Faith. Um, and as a result, this album has something of a sense of occasion about it. They're playing at Madison Square Garden. It's Steve Winwood, it's Eric Clapton, and they're drawing songs from all over the back catalogue. There's Clapton songs, there's Traffic songs, there's Blind Faith songs, there's, um, there's some Jimi Hendrix stuff. 
Um, it's really an exceptional live album, I think. There's some absolutely magnificent playing from uh, both of them, actually. Um, uh, there's long workouts of some Jimi Hendrix covers and, and Eric's on fire. Um, but he doesn't really get talked up too much, this album. I went and saw this tour and I was absolutely blown away. So I was thrilled when they released the album from it. But it's a really good live record. And as I say, the sound is great and the band is really, really good. Um, from number six, um, and I think now we're starting to get into the really essential Eric Clapton albums. We're going to do um, on uh, From the Cradle from 1994. Um, this was made in the sort of afterglow of Unplugged, a record we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, and Eric Clapton's always, of course, been a blues man. Um, but this was a real full on return to blues. Uh, I think something that he'd wanted to do for a long time. Uh, it, as in the end, he ended up doing a couple of full Robert Johnson tribute albums, which were very well regarded. But it's the variety of this record that I think puts it above those ones. Um, there's, there are no overdubs. He's used a lot of original recording techniques that were used by the original blues men, and the album sounds really full of life, and there's a real richness to it. Um, you can you feel like you can go walk in between all the instruments because it was all recorded live. Um, the playing is fantastic. He's got Chris Dainton on piano. He's got Jim Keltner on drums. Andy Fairweather Low is is in there on guitar. But the biggest tribute to this album is that some of these songs have almost become now the go-to standards. You've got a, a, an absolutely blistering version of Tour Down. The solo on Five Long Years is, is, is fantastic. Um, Blues Before Sunrise. These are really, really electrifying versions um, done with love and care and no small craft indeed. It's a really, really great modern blues record. Um, number five, and it's Disraeli Gears. From 1967, this was the second, uh, the second of four Cream albums, um, and Cream, of course, was a supergroup uh, as it was known at the time, with Ginger Baker um, on drums and Jack Bruce on bass guitar. And uh, I, I think you know, Cream on record, very, very different proposition to what they were live. And on record, they were uh, more focused, more concise, and you ended up having these fantastic sort of pop rock songs. Quite a few on this album. You've got um, uh, Sunshine of Your Love, you've got Tales of Brave Ulysses, Strange Brew, but it's the deep cuts on this record that I think make it better than most of the other Cream, well, better than all the other Cream records actually. Um, you've got Swalabra, you've got um, Dance the Night Away. Um, it's it's one of the go-to essential sort of psychedelic records and one of the records that really sort of compounded uh, Clapton's reputation and Cream's legacy and I think generally regarded as the best Cream album but there is a lot of debate about it um, but it's, it might, it's certainly my favourite. Uh, number four from 1966 the Blues Breakers album this is uh, the Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton it's also known as the Beano album because Eric Clapton is uh, reading a Beano comic on the front cover um, this is an absolutely sensational record. Uh, it, when it came out in 1966, people had heard no one play the guitar like this. Um, he, this is Eric Clapton going in and playing with John Miles Bluesbreakers. John Miles was one of the blues Svengali's and movers and shakers on the scene at the time, and he's still going strong, still hiring lots of great guitar players. Um, and he's playing with John McVie, who ended up in Fleetwood Mac on bass, and Huey Flint on drums. But Clapton goes in with his Les Paul, he turns the Marshall stack up on full, and boy does he attack it. I mean, if you're a guitar player and you're interested in the blues, this is absolutely one of the go-to records. And these licks are still now part of the blues lexicon for all guitar players everywhere. There are absolutely sensational versions of Otis Rush's um, uh, All Your Love, uh, it's gone out of my head. Um, there's Freddie King's Hideaway. Um, and it's still a blueprint today for, for guitarists playing. Um, and it's always in the top 10 blues albums of all time. Um, it, it really did set a marker down and a new standard in, uh, in electric blues guitar playing. Um, also, it's got uh, Eric's first vocal on it, which was uh, uh, foretold a, a, a career of stepping into the, the spotlight. He sings on Rambling on My Mind here and does a pretty good job, but as we'll hear later, he develops into a fairly great blues singer eventually. Um, at number three, 461 Ocean Boulevard from 1974. This, I think, is his best solo studio album. He had by this time recovered from um, his uh, heroin addiction and he um, moved to Florida with his band to do some recording in the sunshine and this has got a lovely um, laid-back 
sunny, beautiful, sort of chilled vibe about it. There's some really lovely sounds and songs on here. You've got uh, Motherless Children, I Shot the Sheriff, of course, which was an American number one and introduced uh, reggae music to, to a lot of people who hadn't heard before. Um, Let It Grow is on here, which is a beautiful Eric Clapton song. Um, and there's some lovely, lovely uh, other songs. Please Be With Me, Mainline Florida. It's very, very consistent. I don't think there's a weak song on here. And it really just incorporates a lot of styles very elegantly and easily. It all sounds very easy for Eric on this album. It's a real taste of what the man is capable of when he's on his game. Um, he sings and plays well. And the band hit all the right tones everywhere. Um, again, he's got Carl Radle, Aldecker, and George Terry. And there's people we were talking about. Um, but for my, for my money, uh, my favourite Eric Clapton solo studio record. Um, and number two, uh, Unplugged from 1992. Well, what can we say about Unplugged? This was an enormous record when it came out. It won six Grammys. It has sold 26 million copies worldwide. It is the world's biggest selling live album. A lot of people think it's Frampton Comes Alive. Um, but no, it's this. Uh, this was recorded live in front of an audience, so it is a live album. Um, this really is Eric Clapton at the height of his second wave of fame. Um, he'd been building up to it a little bit with um, Journeyman, and this uh, album is most famous for Tears in Heaven, which is now, of course, a standard, which was written uh, about the, the death, the tragic death of his son Connor the year before. Um, it's also got a, the acoustic version of Layla on it, which was the version Clapton adopted uh, live for many years afterwards. Um, it's got some lovely, lovely blues on it. It's got Alberta and Malted Milk, some, some real standard, beautiful acoustic blues songs. Um, and I think it appeals to both Clap to Clapton fans, blues fans. And also, I think it was so successful, it moved into that area where, you know, it, it, it appealed to the sort of dinner party clique. It's that kind of record when you were going out in the 90s, you went to have dinner somewhere and you, you might hear... Uh, unplugged playing on uh, the stereo so it had a massive crossover appeal the, the playing is absolutely immaculate um, uh, there's a sense of, of, of sal uh, sadness and melancholy across a lot of the album I think that's unavoidable considering um, uh, considering uh, what had happened the year, the year before but but certainly this album catapulted Clapton back firmly into the public eye and as, as, as uh, just just uh, compounded his legendary status that we always knew he had uh, and was kind of always waiting for him to deliver another great album again. Well, this was certainly it, Unplugged. Um, but number one uh, on my list of the top 10 Eric Clapton albums is Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs from 1970. This is an album with an extraordinary backstory. Um, if you don't know it, it's uh, an album inspired by Clapton's love for Patty Boyd, who was his best friend George Harrison's wife. Clapton had an, a, 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 a yearning and a love for Patty Boyd, um, and eventually he won her over. Um, but a few years down from this album, he wrote this album and he, he made this album almost for Patty Boyd, but she didn't respond by leaving George. Um, not yet, anyway. Um, he had played in Delaney and Bonnie um, to get away again from this superstar status that was hounding him uh, and the fame, and he liked that. So he released this album as Derek, Derek from Derek and the Domino. So his name wasn't anywhere on the album. As a result, it didn't even chart in the UK. It wasn't until uh, uh, it sort of drip fed out that it was actually Eric Clapton on it. Um, it's an it's an album. It's a mature album, uh, made racked in pain, racked in turmoil, clearly made by somebody who's going through some anguish. You've got, of course, the 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 the, the world famous Layla itself, um, but you've also got songs like "Tell the Truth," um, and you've got "Why Does Love Got to Be So Sad" and "Bell Bottom Blues," which is absolutely one of Eric Clapton's greatest ever songs, and one you must check out if you have any interest in the man. Um, you've got uh, the Dominoes with Jim Gordon on drums, Carl Regal on bass, Bobby Whitlock on piano, and um, uh, uh, crucially Dwayne Ullman from the Ullman Brothers on slide guitar, who adds a real beautiful sort of slide glow over everything, and it just sounds and fits fantastically well. Great deep cuts, I Looked Away, Any Day Tell the Truth, there's some brilliant blues in Keys of the Highway. Like I say, it's a powerful, powerful record. It's an emotional roller coaster. Um, and the, the pain drips out of every pore. Um, I think it's one of those great records that really reflects where the artist is in their life at the time. Another good example would be something like Blood on the Tracks by Dylan or even Black Star by David Bowie. Um, 
and it's very rare that an artist so perfectly encapsulates that kind of reflection of who they are and what they're going through. But I think Layla absolutely does that. And I think it really deserves its status as one of the great, great double albums. And absolutely, though arguably, at the top of my list of the top 10 Eric Clapton albums to have. Um, there are lots of other great Eric Clapton albums. Um, like I say, they are consistent, but Five Live Yardbirds is a really good record. Um, Pilgrim's a great record. Um, the first Eric Clapton record I like very much. No Reason to Cry has some good stuff on it. All the Cream stuff is worth investigating. Um, but it's difficult, as we said, with a, such a sprawling back catalogue to, to, to go through all of them from worst to best. So this time we've done a top 10. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you don't agree. If you don't, say so in the comments beneath. Let me know. Um, and I will see you again very soon for another Rock Records Reviewed. Thanks. Bye bye.